I'm Megan Harden and welcome to my channel where I offer fitness workouts and nutrition advice to help you get in the best shape of your life at any age. Wondering how many calories you should be eating to achieve your weight loss or fitness goals? In today's video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to figure it out. Let's get started. In today's video, I'm going to help you figure out what your calories should be for weight loss using an online nutrition calculator. I'm a precision nutrition coach, and so I'm going to use the precision nutrition calculator. I think it's very easy to use, and I'm going to walk you through it. This is what I would fill out for a nutrition client. And there's some tips and tricks I wanna give you though when you're filling it out to give you more accurate calorie total per day. So I'll leave the link for the calculator in the description below. So you can follow along with me or you can go back and fill it out after you watch the video. All right, let's get started. So we're going to press the get started button. So I'm gonna come up with just a fake client and we're gonna select client. We're gonna say our client is 38 years old, female, five foot five. Okay, we're gonna say they weigh 200 pounds right now. All right, so here we go. Now, I'm gonna tell you, if you look at all these different goals, most people pick the body recomp because if you read it, it sounds great. Lose weight, build muscle, all at the same time. I usually take people out of that one and I bump them to the lose weight, and here's why. Body recomp is gonna put you roughly right below your maintenance calories. So that's the amount of calories that you need to maintain your weight right now. It's gonna put you right below it and it's gonna be a long process, a year or two, to see changes. Now there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's great to do, but if you wanna see weight loss, you need to check, you, we need to check the lose weight button. Okay. So here's our options, lose weight, 10 to 15 or more pounds. Build muscle, now if you read this, build muscle and increase your overall body weight. Do you hear that? You need to be prepared that your body weight might increase because you're building muscle. Then we have athletic performance. I almost never choose that one for anybody body recomp. After I explain to clients the purpose of it, I have selected that for a few people. But they usually end up wanting me to redo their macros and they put in the lose weight. Okay, improve health, that's just maintaining your weight. Um, you don't want to go up, you don't want to go down, you just want to maintain. So for our client, we're going to pick lose weight. How much do they want to weigh? All right, here's another area where they might want to weigh 130 pounds, but if I put 130 pounds in, it's going to give me a really low daily calorie total. And I feel like that is just setting somebody up for failure. So I'll go in 20 pound increments. So after they lose 20 pounds with these calories, they can revisit this calculator, put in their new weight, put in maybe they started exercising more, so they might put in um, a different exercise level. So for this person, we're just going to start out with a 20 pound initial weight loss. By when? Here's another one that's filled out wrong most times. So a safe rate of weight loss is 1% of your body weight per week. 1% of your body weight. So our client's 200 pounds, so two pounds is a 
a safe rate of weight loss, give or take, of course. That's a safe rate. So you may have something you want to lose weight for, and it may be in four weeks, but 20 pounds in four weeks is not realistic. That would be five pounds a week, and that would not be a safe rate of weight loss for this person. So um, a better rate would be something more like three months. So we will choose three months out. Okay, preferred style of eating. Honestly, it's your preference, whatever you like. Most people pick anything. That's what I'm gonna pick for our client. All right, standard macronutrient ratio or customize. We're gonna use standard. If you're not familiar with macros, we're just stick with standard. How many meals do they like to eat each day? We'll just say four. Okay. Describe how active they are each day. This is another area where people tend to overestimate their activity level. So we have very light, sitting most of the day. Okay. So if you have a 40 hour a week job and it's a desk job, and you sit there and maybe you get up to use the bathroom or you get up to have a snack or talk to a coworker a few times a day. That's very light. You want to select that one. Light is a mix of sitting, standing, and light activity. So you can see they have teacher as an example. I put most of my clients in light. So like I work from home, so I am I might go put laundry in, you might walk your dog, you might run some errands, but there is also some sitting during the day. That will be light, moderate. A lot of people select moderate, and the problem with moderate is it needs to be for 40 hours. So they give an example like a restaurant server. Um, my daughter worked at Starbucks and you know she had a six hour shift of on her feet going crazy trying to get these coffee drinks out. I might select moderate for her. Um, a nurse, if you're not on your feet for 40 hours, I don't select moderate. I err on the side, if you're trying to lose weight, err on the side of the light. Uh, heavy, don't usually ever select that for any of my clients. And you can see the uh, examples construction workers so you're doing physical labor 40 plus hours a week that would be heavy so we're gonna select light all right then we have what des best describes their weekly workouts so this is another one where people can overestimate just based on what this says um, we have very light, so that's basically you're not exercising at all. Um, we have light, one to three hours of gentle to moderate exercise, moderate, three to four hours, and I will say for strength training, hit style, things like that, and you do it five, six days a week, I typically will select moderate. Um, some people try to uh, select intense because it says four to six hours of moderate to strenuous. That I would, like I said, I would err on the side of going down to moderate if you're trying to lose weight. Then very intense, don't ever select that one. So let's say our client works all day um, and then brisk walks three nights a week. So we're going to put her under light. Okay, now we have our results. Brief summary of what we just entered. You can see that to maintain our client's weight, they need 2,544 calories a day. That's how many calories they're roughly eating with a normal metabolism um, to maintain that weight of 200 pounds. So to reach their goal of 
of losing 20 pounds in the 90 days, the three months, they need to eat roughly 1,583 calories. Now, I'm gonna say roughly, because you don't have to exactly hit 1,583. Some days it might be a little lower, higher. We're gonna be close. And then you'll see it broken down into the macros, which are your protein, carbs, and fats, which make up the total calories of food. So my recommendation here is to make sure that you get very close to the protein total that they give you. This one says 170 grams of protein. The reason we need our protein is because it's gonna keep us fuller longer and it's gonna help us maintain our lean muscle mass and get rid of our fat. Okay, and then you can see where they're showing you um, the hand size for portion sizes for your protein. And then we go down to vegetables, four to six servings of vegetables, three cupped handfuls, 113 grams. So our client's not getting a lot of carbs, but they don't work out a lot. So they're not able to eat a whole lot of carbs and two thumb size portions, which is 50 grams of healthy fats. Okay, we are going to download our guide and then this is gonna give us a bunch of extra information that's really helpful, um, healthy foods to buy, how to make adjustments. Okay, so we're gonna download the complete guide. All right, we're gonna name our client Jane Doe. Type in my name. Okay, so we're going to download it. And then we're going to take a look at it together and I'm going to talk you through it. Okay. So, we scroll down, you can read through this, take your time, understand it, okay. This is just the basic information we entered. All right, this is what it told us to eat. You can see right here, it gives you 1,583 calories. Meal ideas, that's handy. Nutrition labels. You have to get used to reading nutrition labels. Um, I would recommend downloading my Fitness Pal or some type of food tracking app. I know people go a little nuts with food tracking, but I think it's important when you first start to track your food, to know the how much you should be eating, the types of foods you should be eating for your goals. And after you do that for a period of time, you then can do intuitive eating. Um, and if you get off track with intuitive eating and you like start to gain weight again, you can go back to tracking for a period of time and get right back on track and then you can go back to intuitive eating. Okay, so this is using your hand for a guide for measuring. If you don't wanna use a scale and measuring cups, you can use your hand. It's fairly accurate and we all have hands. They're with us at all times, so it's pretty handy. No pun intended. Okay, and then it just tells you how much the palm is worth. So like if you're a woman, you have a smaller palm, so it's probably gonna be more like 20, 25 grams. A man has a bigger palm, so his, the protein would be more like 30 grams. Same with carbs and your fats. Okay, how to meet your targets. All right, so here we go. 
of all the macros, if you don't want to count your macros, you just want to do total calories, try to hit the protein total. So for this person, I'm going to say come as close as you can to 170 grams of protein. Maybe it's 160 some days, maybe it's 178 some days, close. Try to keep that protein up there. The carbs and fats don't really matter as long as you stay right at your calorie total for the day. So as long as you try to get the protein in, then the rest of the calories, it doesn't really matter as long as you don't really go above the 1583. So split it up any way you want. So here's an example of how they would split it up into portions. And you don't want to eat all your protein at one time. You would get sick and your body needs it throughout the day. So it keeps you fuller, longer, happier, feed your muscles. Okay, so it might look something like this. They have seven times a day. That might be too many times for you, so you would have more grams and less servings. But something like this might be your breakfast, then your mid-morning snack then your lunch, then your afternoon snack, then your post-workout protein, then your dinner, and then evening. So you see how you, have, you break it up several times a day, you'll be having protein. And we'll get to protein selections here in a second. So then your vegetables, so I mean for most people, vegetables or something you would might consume in a snack, lunch or dinner. So divide those any way you want. Carbs, you see how we only have three. So you might do maybe for breakfast, like you're totally fine with eggs. So you don't need carbs for your breakfast. So you might want to use your carbs up at lunch, dinner, and an evening snack, whatever. It doesn't really matter. You can choose. And then your fats, you have two, and you would use those wherever you want. Of course, lunch and dinner, a lot of people would rather have some type of fat in those meals. All right, so that's just a daily tracker for you. All right, and now here are some protein selections. So we have a column, eat more. So these are your healthier protein selections eat some of, so some of these, and then eat less, these won't be that often, you know, it's not gonna kill you if you eat something in that category, but more than not, let's stay in the eat more of. And so what I would do is just circle the things that you like, so when you go to the grocery store, you got your list already made out. We come down to carbs, same thing, Go through the eat more and select all the things you're willing to eat out of that. Then the eat some of, and then we'll try to stay away from the eat less of as much as possible. There will be times where we have our treats. I have a treat on Saturday. Helps me stay on track the whole rest of the week. Fats. Select the fats you prefer. And vegetables. Filling up on vegetables is a great way to feel like you've eaten and they're very low in carbs. All right, so here, like I said before, the 1% of your body weight is recommended for weight loss a week, that's reasonable. And of course, anything above that would be considered a little bit more extreme, and then below that would be really comfortable. And then of course, muscle gain, it's a lot slower than losing weight. And then this just kind of tells you how to make adjustments. So I'm gonna tell you that I really, really do not recommend making adjustments, but once a month. So my body was notorious 
for not making a change until about two and a half weeks. The first week, it's like, yeah, I think this chick, she's doing something different, but I'm not going to change anything. Week two, hmm, she's still doing it, so it's start to make the change. Week three, yeah, she's sticking with it, and then I would start to see some weight loss at that point usually, but if I had made the adjustment at two weeks, then I would not have seen that. So I really, really recommend three would be minimum, four weeks would be ideal to make an adjustment. So at the calorie intake that you're given with this calculator, remember this is a baseline. It's not, um, you know, perfect. It's just a starting point. You stay there for a month. Then you go, okay, um, not losing weight at all. You may need to drop it 250 calories. Stay there. If you start to lose weight at that point, stay there. Don't keep dropping. You want to eat. The goal is to eat as much as you can on a weight loss, but still maintaining a deficit. That way your body will not cling to your fat. It'll release it because it's no, it knows it's going to get food. And then of course, gaining. If you're not gaining muscle like you want to, you would have to increase your calories every day. And then it's right, it says here, wait four weeks to make an adjustment. I would recommend reading all this and downloading a, uh, like my fitness pal to start calculating your calories for you every day to get on track. I'd recommend downloading a weight tracker. Um, I typically would weigh myself, well, I weigh myself every day, but I typically will not record Monday or Tuesday's weights because on Saturday I have kind of a treat day and I allow myself some indulgences. And then on Sunday I don't work out but I still maintain my calorie level um, on the day, the same as on the days that I do work out because I don't want to do all that carb cycling. I just keep it simple, keep my calories the same. So I know on Monday when I get on that scale, it's probably going to be, it's typically four pounds heavier than my last weigh-in of the prior Saturday. I don't freak out because I know I can't put on, you know, four pounds in a day or two. It's really not possible. So I give it a few days of working out and back onto my, you know, calories per day and my weight drops right back to where it was. And I usually record Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. That gives me more accurate um, weight to go by to see where I stand like if I'm maintaining, if I'm losing, if I'm gaining. Thanks for watching guys. If you have a comment, leave it down below and it would really help me out if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, see you next time.